Hey, it's Anna. Welcome back to Solo Trip Podcast. And if you're new here, hi, I'm an independent music artist. I write, record and produce my own music. And I also film these weekly solo trip videos and podcast episodes talking about all things spirituality and metaphysics. And today we're going to talk about a societal type of concept sort of thing, whatever you want to call it, which is the standard of beauty. And it's something that like, I feel like everyone nowadays is affected by it, not just beauty, but like success and all of these other standards. But for today's one, I really want to talk about beauty because this is one that's like really close to my heart, something that I have battled with and still battle with even now, to be honest. But um, also because of uh, like putting out music and stuff, like the path that I'm on of music which essentially is like you have to be quite public and open with it so because of that I get a lot of young girls that message me in my dms and that also text me because I give out my phone number so like the interactions that I have with them I feel like it's so important to talk about this topic because it's always something that they're struggling with or like everyone struggles with you know especially in western culture and western countries this is an issue that we deal with on a daily fucking basis so I wanted to film this video and I am going to address the fact that I am wearing makeup as well, obviously. Like, that's probably going to be one of the first things that people think when they click on this video or any of my other videos. But um, I will talk about that, like, as I go, because I'm going to be sharing my own battle with it, my own experiences with it. There is a siren outside. Let them leave. <laughs> but yeah, because I experience it myself and stuff. So I do want to dive into why I'm even wearing makeup and like my own mental battle with this topic and everything like that but also for those of you that do like wonder why the fuck I even give my phone number out I just give it out to anyone that like supports me or anyone that I speak to on Instagram and DMs and stuff I always give out my number because this journey of like trying to not only uncover the truth with all of the things that's hidden from us but also trying to like um build a good relationship with yourself it can be quite isolating because not everybody is here to do that so I give out my number and also open up my dms to everyone just to connect with you guys that are doing the same thing because it can get really isolating for me as well as for you so you know my um all my like social media and my number and everything like that will be in the description box below if you want to check that out but yes let's jump into this topic i don't even know how long this video is going to be because i feel like i could talk about it for life like forever this is one of the things that women especially and obviously i'm a woman so i can only really go from the female perspective in this experience at this point in time so like that's all i can really share but I do feel like, especially for women, this is something that really affects us and something that we battle with a lot. But I also know that it does affect men too because it affects the way they look at women. It affects the types of image that they're attracted to. Like it affects us all in so many ways. So yes, we're gonna talk about this because literally, like I have to be on social media and put myself out there a lot so I understand like the strategic and marketing and like that kind of side of things so when we think about celebrity and we think about um influencers and all of the people that like earn a living off of being on social media I understand the business side of things and why they post what they post. But then at the same time, I also understand that not only is it negatively affecting um, the people that consume it and their audience, but it also negatively affects yourself. Like I've found myself so many times feeling negative about what I'm posting or like questioning what I'm posting and stuff like that. So even when you even when it's like an influencer person that everybody's jealous of or everybody wants to look like or whatever, you know, like you can look at the Kardashians and people like that. Even when it's somebody that like 
they have the money to get the body that they want or even if it's somebody that naturally has that kind of body or aesthetic or whatever fucking word you want to use but even when it's natural they still have insecurities and they still have things about themselves that they would change you know so like all of us literally all of us are affected by this whether we're aware of it or not we all buy into it <laughs> without even meaning to sometimes but and obviously I can only go from my experiences but I definitely even though I'm aware of its existence and I'm aware of the negative effect it has I can still find myself getting caught up in it and like battling with my mind about it you know so I just think like when you think about years ago and what the standard of beauty was, especially in like the 90s and the early 2000s, because obviously this is the time where technology is starting to like become something. And we just had like magazines and things where you could look at women and what they looked like and like their beauty and stuff. And it was always like really skinny and nice hair, you know, like and mainly white women obviously like but we're not even going to get into race because I'll be here for fucking ever <laughs> but that is kind of like what the standard of beauty was then and now it's obviously progressed into what it's progressed into and I'm sure everyone is aware of what it's progressed into but I know like I've found myself debating um like cosmetic procedures and surgery and all of these kind of things so I just know especially because I'm in music and we have to put out music videos and we have to do photo shoots for like the album artwork and you know it's all about looking a certain way and carrying your certain uh, carrying yourself a certain way but like the audience are then looking at that and they like they take on what they see and they like you know people are just so influenced by influencers you know so I know for myself I'm trying to be more conscious about what I put out there and also like even if I'm gonna wear makeup and stuff I'll still sit here and speak about the vulnerability and the insecurity and everything behind it so I've just really become aware of the toxic um, message and image that's being put out there to not just young girls but to everyone and we're all chasing this same aesthetic and I'm saying we because I know I do it too like we're all chasing this same aesthetic and this same body type and this same facial features and this same everything we all want to look like that thing because everywhere we look it's there you know on every Instagram page, on every music video, in every TV show, like it's just everywhere and it's shoved in our faces all the time that we then feel like we're not good enough if we don't look like that or we need to change ourselves to start to look like that, you know? And things just end up in a complete downward spiral. And there was a um, an interview that I watched not that long ago, maybe a couple of months ago. It was um, the Black Magic 363 channel, Brother Rich's channel. And he had, I can't remember who it was, but there was like a female rapper on there. And she was talking about the toxic way that like the culture is right now, where it's just women completely degrading themselves and stuff. But she made a good point when she said, um, I don't know how she worded it, so don't quote me, but she said something about like, everything's overly sexualized and that's one thing but then it's also like a, women are completely disconnected from their sensuality you know like because um like that female energy of like a, like essential it's like it's divine you know it's something really beautiful and really powerful when a woman is like fully in her power and fully like standing in who she is you know and she owns her body and she owns her sexuality and she owns who she is like that is a real beautiful thing but then the way the like societal norm kind of thing has gone lately is more of like a over sexualized but it's disconnected from the sensual and like the divinity of it and that really resonated with me when she said it because it's so true when you look around and you see women that are trying to like empower themselves and stand in who they are but 
they're doing it in a way where it actually degrades themselves because it's overly sexualized but it's not in a it's not in a sensual way it's not in like an authentic I can't even put this into words so I hope this makes sense but it's like completely disconnected from their hearts and disconnected from spirit and disconnected from like the higher purpose and it's all like animalistic you know and it's not just women that do this like men have done this for fucking god knows how long you know (laughs) but I do think that women are starting to fall down that trap too and this also isn't a judgment because I again have found myself feeling like I need to do that in order to be noticed or be accepted like it's such an easy mentality and path to go down because it's what's accepted right now it's what everybody looks at and gets excited about like it's something that's just seemed deemed as so normal but nobody's really talking about the disconnect from your heart nobody's really talking about the fact that yeah like they do look incredible don't get me wrong like and I'm not even pointing or looking at somebody specific I'm just saying that like yeah when women are um like showing their bodies and being confident in their body and who they are and all of that stuff yeah it does look good and they do look beautiful and some of them are just insane and I'm like oh my god you know like some of them look incredible but there's still an insecurity there there's still a disconnect from your heart, you know, there's still a lack of self-worth and a lack of self-esteem and I feel like all of us battle with that and all of us have that insecurity buried somewhere even if we're not portraying that to the outside world, you know, there's a lot of women that can look extremely confident but actually they're like crying inside because they're so shit scared, you know, so I just think it's like it's the disconnect from your heart that is missing because I've even found myself with TikTok and I know TikTok is mainly for like quite young people but a lot of like celebrities and things are starting to go on there and I have been posting on there but I've just been posting like the little clips from these videos and stuff like that but I really found myself feeling like I needed to follow the trends and feeling like I needed to like essentially degrade myself like I really was seeing the theme of what trends and what goes viral and what people like to watch and for my demographic of who I am it's a lot of women and young girls especially like underage girls all getting on there and overly sexualizing themselves you know and I really started to question whether that's what I needed to do like is that the path I need to go down in order to reach more people and grow faster and build my audience faster you know I literally started questioning this and then I realized like that doesn't even feel fun to me because it's not coming from my heart other people may enjoy it and they may find that fun to do those little videos and like you know flirt with the camera and stuff and that's cool if that's what they like to do if that's fun but for me it just isn't you know And that's just purely because I've had to like work through myself and get to know myself. So that's not even a judgment on anyone that enjoys it either because we're all different. We're all like experiencing ourselves and our lives and everything like that. So you do you. (laughs) This whole video is not me judging people. It's simply expressing my perception on where I feel the collective is right now and it's not right or wrong and your perception is not right or wrong you know we all just perceive it based on where we're at and in a year's time my perception may completely change so I'm just like I'm not trying to judge anyone I'm just simply saying that in my opinion it feels like a disconnect from the heart because even when you look at TikTok those people that are getting on there and that are over sexualizing themselves I know, like, I feel like I know that there's still an insecurity there and they're chasing numbers, you know, like they want to see their numbers grow up, uh, grow up. They want to see the numbers of like followers and likes and all of that keep going up. And I definitely could tell that like, 
if it started to go down, they would feel insecure about it and then they would up their game and do something else dramatic. You know, you can see this with all viral videos and like the people that pull pranks and all of the fake like set up weird shit that people do, you know, all of the dumb things that they do for attention. So I feel like a lot of it is about needing that external validation. So they're obviously disconnected from their hearts. And I think like the main point I actually want to get across and the reason why I'm even filming this video is not about criticising anyone that's doing it. It's literally about the people watching and like me trying to speak to you guys, like speak to the people that actually watch these videos and it makes you feel insecure. Like to get you to realise that you don't need to feel any type of way about what anyone else is doing. You don't need to feel small or belittled or insecure or unworthy or any of that just because somebody else looks good or somebody else has gone viral with a like selfie type video or whatever it may be you know like you don't need to scroll down Instagram and see all of these stunning people and then feel insecure like that's the key message here is that it's affecting everyone in such negative ways that I just really don't like it and I think it's so toxic and this isn't to say that people should stop, it's to say that we should all be getting in touch with ourselves and getting like and figuring out our own selves and our self-worth and our self-esteem. If we were all to do that then not only with the type of like music videos and the content and like all of the photos, not only would all of that change, but like the way we feel, the way we carry ourselves, the societal norms, the standard of beauty, everything would change. All of it would change if we all just were to work on ourselves and build up our own self-esteem and realise that we're worthy simply for being, simply for being who you are, simply for existing. That makes you worthy you know like there's no checklist that you need to tick off in order to be worthy you just are already and always have been so I don't know I just uh, I feel like this video sounds really judgmental but it was not meant to sound judgmental at all because like honestly I don't really care what people do and the only reason I'm even thinking about it is because of the fact that it like affected what I was doing you know because I've scrolled through these blooming photos and stuff and felt insecure so it just I just realized how much it affects us all you know and obviously I did say at the start of this video like I was going to address the fact that I'm wearing makeup and stuff so maybe I should go into like my own little insecurity sort of thing but like there was a point a few years ago I was in a very codependent relationship to be fair so like I always had low self-esteem I was a really shy child and if you watch my other videos you'll know all of this already but um there was a point where I couldn't even go to the shop without a full face of makeup like and not even just that but like I could have a full face of makeup on and I still could not bring myself to go to the shop on my own because I don't know I've always like had social anxiety quite bad but then I think it was like even deeper than that where I just didn't know how to be in public on my own like I felt like the whole world was just staring at me and criticizing me and I just I couldn't even leave my house like no lie I remember one time I literally got to my front door and just burst into tears because I couldn't physically, I could not physically open that door and walk out because I was so terrified, which now when I look at it, I'm like, that doesn't even make sense. Like, why would that even happen? You know, you're literally going to the shop to buy some food. Doesn't make sense. But at the time I just, it was just like suffocated by fear. I couldn't do it, you know? So I did then especially back then I did wear makeup a lot out of insecurity like I'm not gonna lie and I used to wear hair extensions I used to straighten my hair because I didn't like my natural curls that I have in now like, have in now as if I could create them but you know what I mean like I didn't um I just didn't like who I was to be honest so I was very very insecure I'm very shy and I tried to literally change myself to fit in 
with what was normal and what was liked by guys, like what the, all of the guys in my school looked towards. I wanted to create that I wanted to become that and when I went clubbing like when I reached 18 and was able to go out clubbing and stuff I could see what guys were drawn to and I wanted to look more like those girls you know and then you find that you start changing yourself without even realizing like you start buying dresses that are what they would wear you start styling your hair how they would style it so and then you start doing makeup and things and trying to learn makeup so that you can make yourself look the best that you can. And it was something that I struggled with for so, so long. And literally, it's only recently that I even started being okay with going out with makeup. You know, this has been going on for absolute years, but it was when I was on holiday last year in September. I didn't wear my, bleh, I can't even get my words out. I didn't wear makeup once, like not once. I did eyebrows because <laughs> we need eyebrows, but I didn't wear anything else at all. Not even to go out for food in the evening, like nothing. And that's the first time, the first time probably since I was like 14 or 15 that I didn't wear it properly like to go out which is just insane when I think about it because that's such a long time but like these insecurities are there and they stay hidden within you and you don't even realize that it's there until you go to leave your house and you're like holy shit wait let me go and put loads of foundation on and let me just like get myself fixed before I can actually leave which is insane but that's like like that doesn't come out of nowhere, that's part of this societal conditioning that we've had that makes us feel like our bare skin is not enough. Or if you have a breakout, like you can't possibly have anyone notice that or anyone see that, like you need to cover that shit up. It's just insane that we have really accepted that belief system as if it's okay and as if it's not toxic, like it's so detrimental to especially young girls as they're like coming into the world and as they're hitting puberty and they're going through school like I can't even fucking imagine going through school with social media I'm so glad that didn't happen to me because I don't know how you guys do it I don't know how anyone does it where you have to deal with Instagram and like Snapchat and TikTok and YouTube while you're in school with all of your friends being on it and everyone comparing and like trying to get enough likes and oh my god I don't think I could actually handle that I don't know how you're doing it because that just blows my mind to be honest like it's hard for me now so yeah I just realized how much it really does affect us and how toxic it is and like when you think about people's bodies and stuff, like they're literally merging different cultures together in order to look like something that nobody could ever naturally look like, you know? There's not many people that actually look like that because it's a combination of different races, different cultures, different everything all combined into a body that's been created through surgery. So like, it's not something that you could actually ever have and if you've been born without it like if you're a teenager or whatever age you are if you're in your 20s or 30s or whatever if you don't have that like it's because it's not something you could actually have so like we're sitting here beating ourselves up about it but it's not something that you could ever create anyway you know like and you chose your vessel like you chose your parents before incarnation you chose the bloodline that you'd be born into like you chose all of these things and then you get here and you see all of these images and all of these different people around you and now you start to feel shit about your vessel that you get to inhabit for this lifetime like it just sounds so silly so, like when I think about it from that perspective but then when you start watching these videos and looking at these pictures and stuff you fall into that trap and then you just get consumed by it and you forget the higher perspective you know so I just wanted to kind of remind you of this higher perspective that like you are so blessed to be here and not only that but you are so worthy of being here and not only that but your vessel is absolutely perfect exactly as it is you know like it's a gift it's something that you get to experience this life through and you get to experience connecting with other people's vessels you know like you get to experience intimacy with other people's vessels and 
not only that, but their soul and their heart, which is the most powerful thing ever. And we get to like experience connecting with each other's souls and each other's hearts through vessels. You know, like when you think about that, that's just so mind blowing. Like I can't think of a word big enough to describe it, but that's just like so incredible and so divine and so empowering and so beautiful that how could your vessel be judged and criticized for the way that it looks, you know? Like, how can there even be an idea of what it should look like? How does that idea even exist? When we all get to experience this life through unique vessels, and then when we leave here and we go to either a different plane, a different planet, a different place, or if we reincarnate back here, we get a different vessel, <laughs> you know, like they're not ours. They're just a temporary vehicle that we get to use and then you get a different one that you've chosen, you know? So like, how can we be judging one based on the way that it looks or how other people think it should look when literally it's not even ours, it's something so temporary and you've probably incarnated in many before the one you're in right now. So. I think we kind of tend to take it for granted and like forget how incredible that is because we're so caught up in Instagram and all of these like dumb things that don't even mean anything you know like yeah you can get on there and you can go viral over something stupid you can you know like you can do all of these things that you might feel is incredible at the time and yeah it is incredible like that's really cool that tons of people liked what you did that's really cool but then at the same time where's the meaning behind it where's the purpose you know like it's there one minute and then it's gone viral doesn't last it goes viral for five minutes and then it's gone but you get all of these opinions bombarded at you in that viral moment and then it's all gone so like it's so temporary you know and even with beauty like it's so temporary because we age so our vessel is not going to stay the same we have children like as women when you have children your body changes I mean I don't have children so I'm just kind of going by like what other people say but your body changes so like it's never going to stay exactly the same throughout this experience it constantly changes and the idea of needing to compete with this one image for your whole life is so unrealistic and so toxic it's just never going to happen you know because at 90 years old you are not going to look like this image of this barbie doll with a big boobs and big butt and a tiny ass waist you're not going to look like that at 90. You're not even going to look like that at blooming 70. You know? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Not without loads of surgery. It's just not going to happen. And not only that, but why do we even want it to look like that in the first place? And when you really think about any like societal norm or any concept that has been made or <laughs> let me reword that. When you think about the concept of a societal norm and something that has been normalized throughout the whole collective, where does that idea even come from? Like, why do we actually want our bodies to look like that one image for our entire lives? Like, really think about this because there's 15 year old girls and there's 60 year old girls all wanting to look like that same image and where does that idea even come from to make us feel like we need to look like that thing and that how we already look like is not worthy like where does that idea even come from you know like why why do we actually want and desire and crave and desperately like strive to be that image like why <laughs> That doesn't make any sense why we're all going after it and we all feel shit about not being it, you know? <laughs> like, that just dawned on me right now. It's like, why do we actually want that thing? What for? And then when you even get it, because you can see this through tons of celebrities that have got it, tons of celebrities that have had surgery to get it, or had lip fillers, or had this and that and whatever, they don't just stop with that one thing, they then keep going you know like you can see that with so many people they'll have one thing 
and then they'll feel satisfied with that one thing for a minute and then they'll want to go and change something else because it's a cycle that you're never going to get off of like it doesn't end you'll always be nitpicking at yourself you know and it's because of the insecurity it's because of the fact that in order to feel like you need to change something that much there's an insecurity there so people are changing themselves, but they're not dealing with that insecurity. So then they move on to the next body part and then the next body part because that insecurity is still there. That feeling of unworthiness is still there. So you may adjust one thing and feel incredible about that one thing, like that thing's finally fixed. I feel good about it now. I love that body part now. But oh wait, there's this other body part now, let me go change that one too, you know? And it's not, like this is not to judge anyone, it's just simply saying that we all have insecurities that we're not dealing with. And when you don't deal with them, you're never going to be satisfied no matter how you look, no matter how much you change yourself. Even if you change it naturally, even if you start working out and eating better, that insecurity is still there, you know? Because you haven't faced the insecurity, you've just like mask the symptoms or maybe you've bettered your lifestyle but but if you don't deal with the insecurity then you'll just move on to the next thing to be insecure about you know so you might start to love your body but then maybe you're insecure in relationships because you still feel like men don't find you attractive or you still feel like men just cheat you know like there's insecurities in so many areas throughout our lives and one of the main things is how we look and I feel like that is a fundamental like foundational thing because that's to do with ourselves and the vessel that we inhabit before we even get to like the societal norms of success and the norms of like connection and relationships with other people how we look and how we feel about ourselves is literally like the main thing the foundational thing so if that's insecure if that's toxic then everything else will just follow that you know so I hope you start to realise that you're worthy of just being who you are and this idea of beauty of like who who is beautiful and what that should look like is just such a lie. It's a literal programmed belief through films, through TV shows, through all of this stuff, through reality TV, like it's a programmed thing that you're seeing all of the time and now you're buying into it when it doesn't need to be true for you, you know, like you can admire other people's beauty and see that standard of beauty as something that's really pretty or really nice, but that doesn't mean that you have to feel bad about yourself in the process, you know? So, I don't know, that's why I'm filming these videos because I feel like this is just such a, um, a time right now where the divide is happening between people that are stepping into their power and people that are just continuing on with consuming and like just staying asleep basically so like you really need to decide what you want to do like do you want to carry on living like this do you want to carry on feeling insecure and doubting yourself and feeling a lack of purpose a lack of passion like only you can change this shit you know so how long are you going to let yourself continue feeling worthless how long are you going to keep on staring at those pictures on instagram before you actually start to do something about this like start to take back your power and take control of your life and take control of your mindset and also take control of the things that you consume the things that you allow to be in front of your face all the time you know and trust me, I'm talking from my own experience because I spent absolute years allowing myself to feel shit, like allowing myself to stay in depression, allowing myself to stay like feeling anxious around people because really social anxiety is where you're not being yourself, like you fear being yourself in front of people but the only way to deal with these things is to actually face yourself, you know, and I'm not trying to like diagnose people or say like this is the only way to fix social anxiety like no everyone's different we all have our processes and all of that stuff I'm just talking about like myself and what I realized I was actually fearing 
in those scenarios, when you actually look at why you're feeling insecure, why you're feeling uncomfortable around people, why you feel maybe insecure in relationships, like when you really look at the root of those issues, that's the only way that you can change it. That's the only way that you can stop feeling so shit about yourself is to actually face yourself and face those fears and insecurities and take back your power, you know? And once you face them and you work through them, you'll then slowly start to feel more comfortable and more confident in who you are and your body and like everything about yourself kind of thing, you know? And then obviously that will spread into all of your other experiences and your whole life. So like it's the key to this life, it's the whole purpose is to be comfortable in ourselves and to be ourselves. You know, like that's who you came here to be, literally is yourself. So I don't know, I'm just realizing how important it is for us to actually get to know ourselves and be comfortable with ourselves. Because like there's more purpose to this life than just working and sleeping and then browsing social media and watching TV, you know, there's a bigger purpose here. That's not what we're here for. So yeah, the more that you get in tune with yourself, the easier it will be to actually feel on purpose and find your passions, you know? So yes, I'm done ranting for this video, <laughs> but I hope this was helpful and at least just make you like, question things and question your beliefs and what you're consuming and stuff that's kind of the main purpose of it but um yeah it's just a process you know like I'm still dealing with the same insecurities but I just understand them now you know so then they don't have so much power and hold over me they don't dictate my um my decisions and my choices anymore so I decided not to do those videos on TikTok because I realise that's not authentic to me and I don't need to do something just to get attention, like just to build my brand and build the audience. I'd rather build the audience through being me than have to change myself in order to attract an audience, if that makes sense. So I just realise it's always, always about being authentic and about being who you are. But you can't be who you are if you don't know who you are, if you don't spend any time with yourself, you know? So the whole purpose of this journey is to be you okay <laughs> so that is the final message for this video and if you want any more like if you want to chat further and things you can dm me or you can text or whatsapp me that will be in the description box below but also you can check out my other videos where i talk more about changing your beliefs i talk more about literally everything like being insecure I even have a video talking about society and like the collective and all of that stuff so literally just browse through YouTube if you want to watch even more talking about this topic because I do have lots more videos and lots more episodes talking about it but yes thank you so much for listening and watching on the podcast apps I really really appreciate you and don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already on YouTube because I am back every week with more videos and don't forget to check out the description box my music links to all of my music will also be down there and I have new music coming so soon oh my god it's like torture I just want to put it all out but it is a process so yes thank you so much and I will see you in next week's video bye Oh, yeah, I think he like me Yeah, I'm icy, coolin' in that white tea Oh, yeah, I think he like me Yeah, I'm icy, coolin' in that white tea Oh, yeah, I think he might I'm the thing he like, in my range all white Oh, yeah, I think he might I'm the thing he like, in my range all white